morning, beloveds. Welcome once again to the Little Baptist Church webpage connection. We hope and trust that you will enjoy the worship experience this morning, and we welcome you to tune in and be a part of us each and every time we come your way. We pray that you'll be blessed and uplifted from this experience on today. Thank you. And a very pleasant good morning to each and every one of you, our brothers and sisters, our beloved members of the Lily Missionary Baptist Church of Montgomery, Alabama, and to all of you, our brothers and sisters who are sharing with us today by way of social media. As always, we invite the Holy Spirit to guide and direct us in our deliberation, and we pray that each of us will receive a blessing as a result of having shared with us on today. From time to time, we ask the continued prayers and blessings uh, within our church family for members who have lost loved ones, for our members who are sick, or hospital bound, or in nursing homes, whatever the case might be. We know God is able to do all things at all times for everybody. This morning, we ask the prayers of our church family for our beloved member, Sister Maddie D. Jornet. Sister Maddie D. Jornet, who lost her brother on this past week. We pray her strength in the Lord, that the Lord would strengthen her and keep her in his loving care. That's Sister Maddie D. Jornet in the loss of her beloved brother. Then we ask the prayers for our member, Sister Roberta Moore, in the loss of her sister on this past week. We pray God's strength for her and her family as they say farewell to her beloved sister in New Orleans, Louisiana. Then we also ask the prayers for our members, our sister Priscilla uh, Luster in the loss of her beloved grandson and sister Lisa Miles Hegler in the loss of her uh, nephew respectively. They lost the grandson and the nephew, respectively, on this past week. We pray God's continued blessings upon Sister Priscilla Luster and Sister Lisa Miles Hagler. And we also ask the community to remember uh, our late representative Thad T.C. McClary, who left us on this past week, who served in the Alabama legislature for 27 years. Um, as a representative for the state of Alabama. We pray for his children, and we ask God's continued blessings upon them, and thank God for the service of the late representative Thad McClammy. And now, my brothers and sisters, it's time for us to go into our worship celebration, and we uh, ask the Holy Spirit to guide us and to direct us, and as always, we ask you to join us and watch God change things. Amen.
they come right now, dear Heavenly Father. Give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor. We come to Heavenly Father, thanking you for this opportunity. Opportunity to come together one more time. Opportunity to come in your house to wish you one more time. We thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for all your blessings. Thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for you've been so good to us. Thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for just waking us up this morning. Let us see a brand new day. Thank you for all your blessings that you've done for us. Thank you to him, my father, for my health and for my strength. For when you woke me up this morning, I was clothed in my right mind. Had the activities of my limbs. Thank you for the food you put on our table and for the shelter you put on my head. Thank you to him, my father, we have so much to thank you for. Thank you for all your blessings. No, to him, my father, we can't thank you enough. No, to him, my father, don't care what we do or what we say. It's not enough. No, to him, my father, all we got to do is just wave our hand and you will make everything all right. Come to him, my father, just and say thank you. Thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for just letting us come together. Thank you for your son, Jesus. Sacrifice him. He don't care me when he died for the forgiveness of our sins. Thank you, dear Heavenly Father. We come there for you to bless our pastor. Bless our first lady. Bless our church. We come to Heavenly Father and ask you to bless our families and our friends. Come to Heavenly Father and ask you to bless the sick, the shabby, and the grieving. Thank you to Heavenly Father to bless each and every household that represented here this afternoon. Ask you to Heavenly Father just wrap your arms of love and protect you all around. Give us all her home and day. Love seeing you. Love seeing you. We come to Heavenly Father just to say thank you for all your blessings. Amen. Lord, I would come to be Amen. Mm -hmm. 
Praise God. We thank God this morning for this opportunity to be here at the Lily Missionary Baptist Church, better known as the Lily, with our wonderful, wonderful pastor that we've known for a while and God has blessed with many years. And we pray for many, many more years, none other than Pastor Thomas E. Jordan. Affectionately, I refer to him as Dad. I want to say, Dad is wonderful to be here with you and the Lily Missionary Baptist Church family. With respect to your wife, Pastor Jordan, and all the good members, praise God. We bring you greetings from the Progressive Baptist Church. And I want to thank God again as we prepare to move forward and all who are here, God bless you. And as we move forward, we pray that you will make contact with your friends. Send a shout out to them and tell them to join in this morning with us as we come forward with this message this morning. Let us bow our heads. It is in your most holy and righteous name, let all true born saints of God say amen. 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 Just for a few moments from the Psalms 16. All right, all right. Psalm 16. Yes, sir. Somewhere around the 11th verse, for time purposes, we are going to come from there. Various translation we will use, but the first will be the New International Version. Uh, yes. You hear some New King James, and you hear some New Living Translation. But it'll be variation, but the New Living Version we will deal with as we start off. All right. From that 11th verse of Psalm 16, and the Bible says, yes, sir. All right. David talks. He said, you make known to me the path of life. All right. Praise God. You fill me with joy in your presence. Yes, sir. With eternal pleasures at your right hand. David said that you make known to me the path of life. Yes, sir. You fill me with joy mm. when I'm in your presence. All right, all right, yeah. And you give me eternal pleasures that are at your right hand. Yes. This morning I want to speak from the subject, has the church given up on God? All right, all right, all right. Preach has the church, the church Giving up on God. Yes, sir. Has the church All right. mm. given up on God? It's as if though the church has renounced its faith in God. All right. Come on now. The church somehow has looked out and seen that it's no longer in the limelight that it once enjoyed. Look at the church now, falling behind, falling out of order. All right. The world leading the church when God has called the church to lead the world. Yes, sir. The church is baffled now, as if though nobody see the church for who the church used to be. Hmm. Jesus, don't you remember, he said that 
Upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell yeah. shall not prevail against yes, us. Look like not only hell has torn up the church, but everything in the world has seemed as if though it's got a hold of the church. All right, mm. all right. It's so bad, Pastor, until two members of the church, I'm talking about the church of God, right. the universal church. Yes, sir. Two members of the church decided to go and warn God about what's going on right now. All right. No, two members, one of them is the eyes of the church. The other one is known as the heart of the church. All right. The eyes of the church is known as faith. The heart of the church is known as grace. All right. now. They got together and they went and talked to God and said, God, look at what's going on down there on earth right now. God said, what do you mean? So your church no longer feel as if though you have glory and power anymore. All right. Mm. God looked at him and said, why? What's the problem? He said, Lord, a lot of problems are going on. There's a thing down there called COVID-19 is messing them up. All right. Speak so. Faith and grace kept on talking. They said, God, something must be done. God said, are they reading the Bible? Because if they read the Bible, they'll find out that ain't nothing <laughs> too hard for God. And I came to tell you that this morning. <laughs> ain't nothing too hard for them. God said, if they read the Bible, they'll find out that the battle doesn't belong to them. It belongs to the Lord. Yes, sir. God said, if they read the Bible, they'll find out that uh, I should supply all their needs according yeah. to the riches and everything I have in glory. God looked at faith and grace and said, what do you really think the problem is? They said, God, the church, the Christians feel as if though the problems are bigger than you. All right. I came this morning to tell you God is still in charge. Yes, sir. I came this morning to give you some kind of hope, some kind of direction. I came this morning to tell you to don't throw in the towel. Mm -hmm. Don't give up on God. As we look further, we find out that David deals with some of the same situation we're dealing with. And it's nothing but a problem called confidence. All right. Do you know when things begin to mess with your confidence? <laughs> It'll mess you up. Yes. All right. All right. You can have money, <laughs> but you don't have confidence is no good. Yeah. Job, roof over your head, clothing on your back. God blessing us, but something has messed us up. Yes, sir. And we are about to give up on God. Mm. And I want to tell you this morning, don't give up on him. All right. Hold on a little while longer. David faced with the same problem you see in that first verse of the 16th Psalm. David came in there and said, God, preserve me. Yes, sir. Sustain me, God. And every now and then in all of our lives, we go through a situation where we're about to give up. Yes, sir. No, 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 no. I'm not coming here whooping on you. I'm not coming this morning to beat you down. But if you live long enough, there'll be something that knock on your door. Yeah, yeah. That'll make you feel like giving up. Something to call you on the phone. Yeah. Make you feel like giving up. Somebody this morning is barely holding on. But just like David said in this first verse, he said, he said, Lord, preserve me. Yeah. And I want to tell you, you ought to talk to him for yourself. You ought to know him for yourself. You ought to try him for yourself. Can I say it again? You ought to talk to him for yourself. You ought to know him for yourself. And you ought to try him for yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody ought to come in out there, try Jesus. <laughs> He's all right. Have I got a witness? Yeah. David, 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 go on to say, let's stay with that verse number one so I can lay the foundation and I'm finished. He, he, he said, Lord, 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 preserve me. He, he goes on to say, I put my trust in you. Yes, and you know that what messes us up on giving up on God. We're trusting everything and everybody mm. but God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dad, fast, is all right. But fast, you can't heal my body. All right. Vaccines are all right. But vaccines cannot heal my body. 
What I need is God. Because see, vaccine without God is a no value. You're not saying nothing. I hope you're coming to one another. Whatever you have, you better make sure God is with you. Yeah, sir. Whatever you receive, you better make sure God has given it to you. Yeah. Wherever you are, you better make sure God has brought you where you are. Whatever you're doing, you better make sure God is with you. Have I got a witness? Yeah. So he says, Lord, I put my trust in you. But what I love about it and where I get down on my knees and pray hard, and I found some of that second verse of Psalm 16. He said, my soul begin to talk to God. Yes, sir. Come on now, come on. Oh, <laughs> live long enough. Yes, sir. Your body <laughs> will get tired and worn out. But when something begin to worry you and bother you, when something gets on the inside of you, when something begin to tear up that inner fire, that's the soul. David here says, my soul begins to talk to the Lord. Yes, sir. All right. And he talks to the Lord saying, you are my, you my Lord, you my God. And your goodness is not apart from you. So David here in the midst holds on to confidence. Yeah. And in three things, I want to help you with confidence this morning. Praying that you will not give up on God, church. The first thing, as you look at that 11th verse, he said that you make known to me the path of life. Yes. Yes, sir. And, and first thing I want to tell you, you, you should know for yourself, if you've been born again, you should make sure that you know God's path. Yeah. Yeah. That there are many paths out there. You don't hear me. The, but, but, but the only one that will help you this morning is God's path. Oh, yes, oh, are you traveling the right path? Matthew 7, 13 and 14 said, there are two ways. Yes, sir. One is broad, wide, and is of his path. Diverse, rather. Wide and diverse. Everybody's on that. But at another path, so small and narrow. All right. mm -hmm. And said, there are few who are traveling that path. You don't give it yeah. on your path and make it rough and rocky, but you better stay on that path. Yeah, yeah. On your path this morning, you may be laying down on a sick bed, but if God is with you, you still have a healer. Make sure you know God's path. Why? Because safety is in God's path, refuse in God's path, yeah. there's security in the path of God. The world will fool you, Satan will fool you, and get you out there. The worst thing he can do. Yeah. Is get you out there so far away from God. Mm. Do you know God's path? Are you traveling the right path this morning? The next thing outside of path is you need to know, as he goes on to say, you fill me, Lord have mercy, with joy mm, mm. in your presence. You fill me, God, with joy in your presence. The only one who can say that is one who has been redeemed. All right. The only one who can say that is one who has been born again. Yeah. Because there's so many people consider joy to be something outside of God. But I want to tell you this morning, there's nothing better than God. All right. You ought to try for yourself. Oh, yes, all of us out there have tried the world, but there's nothing like Jesus. Yes, the old sir. church would used to have old songs said, can't nobody yeah. do me like Jesus. Can't nobody love me like Jesus. Can't nobody hold me like Jesus. Yeah. Anybody in the building, are you hear me out there? You have to know sure for yourself that, that, that in order to know the importance, you got to know here next, you got to be in the presence of God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God's presence. Yeah. Are, are you in the presence of God? Uh, can you feel it? All right. Does he talk to you? Does he walk with you? And, and I want to tell you the same thing. God's presence. You can hear others talk about the goodness of God. Yeah. But do you have a testimony yourself to talk about God? Yeah, yeah. Or oh, I love hearing others talk about God. I love hearing other people talk about how good God has been. Yeah. But oh, every now and then when I look over my own life, I can see how good God has been to me. Yeah. You should have a praise this morning in your temple. Lord, no matter where you are, you should have something to say good about God. Yeah. Some of them say he brought me from a mighty long way. Yeah. 
Somebody not afraid to say he brought me through danger seen and unseen. Yeah. Somebody said he's been my way out of nowhere. You don't hear me this morning. Yes, sir. But it's something about being in the presence of God. The storms of life can be a raging around you. Yeah. But oh, when you in God's presence, you have a peace that surpasses all understanding. Yeah. Somebody this morning is going through something. Somebody this morning is caught up in a diff of a situation. Yeah. What do you mean by diff? It's difficult, impossible, and frustrating. Yeah. What did I say? It's difficult, impossible, and frustrating. Yeah. But what you got to do is make sure you see Jesus. Yes, sir. Psalm 123, that first verse, I love it. He said, I look up with my eyes and I pray. Yeah, yeah. And he said, oh, I see Jesus. Yeah. I want to ask you a question. Do you see Jesus? Do you see him in your life this morning? Right. Do you see him working in your life this morning? Oh, if you can't relate to me, you all bobble down because you think about your problems. But I want to tell you, problems will always be there. But make sure you have the Lord with you this morning. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody in the building can hear me? Feeling good now? Anybody in the building can hear me? I'm in the presence of God. And you know what? When I'm in the presence of God Almighty, I can take one more minute. I'm not worried about nobody else. They got an old song, nobody but me, my God, and I. You ought to take some time out and pray with him. You ought to take some time out and have a little talk with him. Before you got up this morning, did you have a talk with Jesus? Before you went to sleep last night, did you have a talk with Jesus? There ought to be three things you do every day in your life. And don't forget me on this. There ought to be three kind of some conversations you have every day in your life. And if you have these three conversations, you live a full day. Yeah. When you get up in the morning, yeah. if you talk to the Lord and say, Lord, thank you for watching me over my all night long. Yeah. And as you go through the day, you don't hear me. You ought to talk to God and say, Lord, you've been good to me. Yeah. You ought to talk with him and say, Lord, as long as you're by my side, I know everything's going to be all right. Yeah. And before you lay down at night, say, Lord, you brought me through another day's journey. Yeah. And make sure you tell him, if I don't wake up in the morning, yeah. everything going to be all right. Yeah. Anybody in the building, yeah. if you can talk to him, church, you'll find out just a little talk with Jesus. Yeah. Won't it make it all right? The last thing I want to tell you, I told you about the path of God. Right. I told you about God's presence. And the last thing I want to tell you about is the pleasures of God. Amen. Because he said, with your eternal pleasures at your right hand. Can I say it one more time? Yes, sir. With your eternal pleasures. With your <laughs> at your right hand. With your eternal pleasures. Yes, sir. Your eternal pleasures. Hear me this morning, church. Your eternal pleasures. Yeah. David was not talking about only what was on earth. But David began to think about the afterlife. Yeah, yeah. And if you begin to think about the afterlife, woo, yes, you won't give up on it. Because though this old body may be decayed, I got another body not made by the hands of man. Though this old life may be fading away, I have another life, you don't hear me, that I shall live forever. No wonder James C. Moore wrote in 1912, if I'm right, James C. Moore was looking at his father and he was fading away in life. His voice was giving up and James began to give up on his daddy. But James strolled away for a moment and he began to write down some words. And he wrote these old words. I heard of a man in a far away stream. It's a beautiful home. Oh, for my soul. You don't hear me? It's built by God's own heart where we never shall die. In that land where we'll never grow old. Can I get a witness? I heard. Have you heard of a land in a far away strand? And I want to stop on a strand for a moment. A strand 
is a piece of land and nothing but water is all around it. And every now and then, sailors, when they're sailing, they look for a little strand of land because when they're out on the ocean, they get tired, they get weary, and they're almost about to give up. This morning, can I help somebody? I know you're tired. I know you're weary. I know you're about to give up. But oh, if you can look and see that strand of land, you got a home, not just for your body, but I got a home for my soul. It's built by God on high. Thank you, God. I'll never grow old. Anybody hear me? One of these old days, I pull off more and put on immortality. One of these old days, I'll take off the corruptible and put on the incorruptible. One of these old days, if I hold on a little while longer, everything gonna be all right. I got news for you this morning. Don't you give up. Hang on in there. I said, hang on in there. I said, Father, oh, Father, I stretch my hand to thee. No other help I know of. Can somebody hear me this morning? I made up my mind. I said, I made up my mind. And I'm praying you hold on just a little while longer. I made up my mind. I'm not going to turn around. I'm going to hold on. I got heels in front of me. I got a bat in front of me. But I'm not worried. My road is rough and it is hilly. I got to go in a battle. It's crooked sometimes. But I'm not worried. I'm going to go on and not give up. Because Isaiah said he made my rough places smooth. My crooked places straight. My valleys he bring them up. My mountain and hills he bring them down. You got to hold on and don't give up. Why you not going to give up you, Chris? Because Jesus, the Son of God, Jesus, the great I am, Jesus, my way out of nowhere, Jesus, my bread when I'm hungry, Jesus, my water when I'm thirsty, Jesus, my ladder to high mountain, can you help me this morning? Do you know him? Do you know him? If you know him this morning, you ought to call on him. Said Jesus, look what he did. They put a cross on his back, nailed him to a cross, a crown of thorn on his head, lifted him up, put him between two thieves. He died. Don't have long. He died. Yes, he died. But early, early, early Sunday morning, he got up. If he got up, you ought to get up this morning. Don't give up. Put your hands in the hand of a man. Oh, Lord. Yeah, yeah. Don't give up this morning. Don't give up. This Don't give up. Stay on his path. Stay on his path. Look how you travel. Yeah. Stay in his presence. I say God's presence. And appreciate the pleasures of God. Did you hear? His path. Yeah. His presence. And his presence. I'm going to say it one more time. Yeah. You won't give up. <laughs> you won't give up. If you truly stay on God's path. Yes, sir. Stay in God's presence. And praise him for his pleasures. Yes, sir. God bless you. Yes, sir. God sanctify the soul. May God keep you. May God hold you. I pray I've said something that is heaven. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. On this old journey.
Thank you, my beloveds, and all of our friends who have been able to share with us this morning. We hope and trust that you have been spiritually enriched, that your spirit is enhanced, and that you are fully committed more to serving the Lord in all that we do. Many of you have asked how you might continue to support this ministry, and we're happy to announce that we have uh, implemented uh, some alternative ways of giving and supporting this ministry. Cash app, and of course, the traditional way of mailing in your gifts or bringing them by the church office. In a manner that you choose to give, we will certainly appreciate and we pray that we will be better in your sight and glorious in the sight of Almighty God. Thank you very much. Thank you, my beloveds and our friends for sharing our Little Baptist Church Connection broadcast on today. We hope that you have been inspired, uplifted, and of course, we hope that you gain greater spiritual strength as we face these unpredictable times. We ask that you will join us again real soon, and as always, please watch God change things.